Hello again, it's Janne here. Good morning, good day. I'm sorry uh, we are a little bit late uh, because technical issues, but here we are again. So it's the last round for Finno Agric uh, Chester. Finno Agric regions of Russia are uh, also one team from there. So we have four teams, 25 players per team, and so far. Finland has won both of matches, uh, matches and uh, they were against Hungarian team and yesterday we saw Finland playing against Estonian team and taking, taking the victory there and so far Finno Agric Russian team has also won both of his game games and let's see how were the exact results so exact results were that Finland was beating uh, Estonia 13 and half points uh, uh, 13 and a half points for Finland and 11 and a half for Estonia. Very close match. It was closer than I thought. Um, there was a few games um, left before before I stopped my stream. Uh, uh, Finland had already won that match, but it seems Estonia made some comeback comeback there. And of course. Um, and yesterday, second match, Finno Agric Russia beats Hungarian team 13 and half to 12 and a half. So it's a one point match yesterday for Finno Agric Russia and Hungary. Very close match there, two one point deciding who is going to win. And yeah, there are 25 boards, so it's pretty nice that the games are going pretty e equally, or teams are pretty even. So we have a lot of good matches going on. And what happens today is that we have here, I would say, we have again a, a <laughs> brotherhood. <laughs> Friendship match prize, brotherhood prize goes again to Tommy Francilla. Uh, game takes uh, eight moves and they decide to just draw this C3 Sicilian. So there's also some results. Half point. Half point for both. Also, Samu Ristoja at board. Eight, nine, I mean nine, yes, ninth board has ended and Samuristoja from Finland taking, taking victory against Alexei Chasupkin in the following position, which truly is just lost for black. Let's say, let's check the first board. Tommy Lukkonen uh, is playing for white for Finland and Alexander Potapov for Russia. Mm. We have uh, Dutch Dutch here. Dutch opening. And Tommy decides to go with this uh, knight c3 setup. Uh, I played uh, that d4 f5 2 uh, at some point and while it is uh, true that it's totally playable but uh, it's a little bit risky maybe risky uh, risky and um, of course uh, there are many lines for white to take this one uh, knight c3 concept is uh, one if if you are not just going to develop your pieces like uh, like g3 bishop g2 knight f3 c4 knight c3 uh, you can choose these kind of concepts and then there's some kind of 
H3, G4 concepts and these are also bishop, bishop not to F4 but G5 is, uh, is coming sometimes uh, if you are playing D4, F5, the Dutch so there's a pretty pretty a lot a lot of attacks to cover I think if you are playing this this opening um, black however goes for the stone wall structure so it's a very solid looking solid looking center and uh, solid looking game that um, f5 e6 d5 c6 uh, setup is called stone wall and it's not without reason that it's called stone wall because it is truly looking like unpenetrable fortress here so all right okay we get a little bit maneuvering here um, black is go going to regroup that a6 pawn um, i have to say also that uh, these we saw here this uh, Bishop B uh, Knight B5 move, uh, which is pretty pretty handy. Or uh, there's a little idea of um, ha that Black has to play Knight A6, and usually, if Black wants to make some kind of uh, attack against White Center, it's happening by Black playing C5. So when White White moves uh, his uh, knight a uh, second time, knight c3, knight b5, and after c3, knight has to move third time, like knight c3 coming back. Um, it looks like uh, it loses some time, but uh, that um, idea is uh, to prove that it's not the case. Uh, idea is uh, uh, after, after, like in the game, after knight a knight a6 comes uh, you if you want to attack white center you have to play moves like c5 and uh, to get play to get to play c5 you usually want your knight from a6 to c6 so black knight uh, had to defend c7 square and later on black has to make some moves extra moves with his knight too to get it into the game so it's not white is trying to say that this knight c3 b5 c3 really did not lose time because black has to make some knight moves too and yeah we uh, we had here this um very typical kind of g4 push g4 push and let's see how did we end in this position all right white trying to make something out of this king side king side attack and black has taken a little bit worse a structure okay black uh, white is also Oh, one pawn down, yeah. So Lukonen with white pieces should find some compensation for that sacrificed pawn. It is remains to be seen if Tommy can if Tommy can uh, have some compensation. So far, it looks uh, totally that <laughs> Black is totally fine. There's no. No way those um, queen on g5 and bishop at f4, they are not gonna make checkmate, they are not gonna checkmate black's king, so, and, three, and black has no, black, re black really has no obvious weaknesses, so, Tommy has to make some work here.
some work here to do. To prove that bone sacrifice was not in vain. Hard position for Lukonen. I think he's trying to hang on there. Um, of course, White has a good some chance to keep that position in check, but eventually I think Black should be far better here. Another bishop coming to c6, c6, h1 diagonal. So that is not going to be, at least now it's not uh, good for Finland, that board. Finno Agrit, Russia's first board, Potapov making some good moves and let's see if it continues like that. that what White tries to have questionable compensation. Board 2 we have Sergei Ivanov and Vilka Sipila playing here. There's a, by the way, I have to say ninth board uh, that Samu Ristoja won Alexei Chasupkin. Uh, Samu had a great tournament here. A great tournament here with two victories and one draw yesterday. So Samu has two and a half points. Two and a half points from three games, so he did pretty well in this matchup. Finland's ninth board playing very strong, very strong. And uh, yesterday we saw very imaginative play by Samu, so also pretty entertaining, entertaining chess. We have um, against Sergei Ivanov and Vilka Sipila. We have this kind of end game where White has a little worse pawn structure because those f3 double pawns. Uh, but White also has a bishop pair of bishops. So White is trying to prove that those two bishops are going to be good and of course White would like to open up some uh, center or open up the game for two bishops to work even better but uh, only move that tries to open up center for White is f4 and black is sure to keep that f4 in check as you can see f4 is covered covered by bishop d6 and knight e6 so f4 is not coming anytime soon mm. It, mm, i think it's a pretty equal battle and as i said that equal battle it's so equal that even players are thinking that this is just going to end in a draw and they are uh, accepting the draw so that game ends there in a in the spirit of brotherhood Sergei Ivanov and Vilka Sipila they are just going to stop playing there and And that's about it. Then we have uh, on Finland side a young Toivo Keinanen seems to be a little bit trouble at least when we take a first look at this position uh, since uh, Rook on F3 is hanging and white also has uh, wh white is one piece down with rook f3 hanging and knight d4 hanging for white so 
this looks like something has really gone wrong for Toivo Keinonen. Looking, looking like point to Finno Agri Russian team here. I think mm, is the uh, best. I think. There's just nothing to celebrate in white position. You are piece down and uh, compensation for you for that piece is just worse position. So that's not how to sacrifice a piece, guys. No way. Uh, Makarenko Kekti. With some solid pawn structures, I guess. All right, Kekki has uh, uh, let's see how did it happen. Okay, it was French defense. The Kekki played French defense, and we saw center, uh, center um, being closed. Uh, White uh, tries to put some uh, pressure on C uh, half open C file and say that he can pressure C6 square, but White uh, Black just denies that pressure. Knight B8. This is a position where Knight B8 is actually doing pretty good job being at starting place it's just uh, defending that c6 pawn and, and white really cannot put any extra pressure there so black species rook a8 is not playing and queen of course d7 is also so far not optimally placed i think Queen wants to transfer to king side at some point, but uh, I think if black doesn't want to play anything, I don't know how white is going. Probably white would have would have some very slow plan to try to play h3 and g4. Uh, on the other hand, black could have something, uh, some king side push with f6 or g5 or h4 h4 is um, not really what you want to do since white has a good follow-up move with g4 taking that beautiful knight away from its f5 square so so we are a little bit in a stalemate here, in a sense, since uh, I don't know if uh, either one of players wants to wants to really uh, do anything on king side. King side is practically the only only area that you can play here or hope to play for, since there's nothing happening in queen side. A and B pawns are blocked and uh, White already got about what he could get from C file to put his rook on C2 and C1 and trying to trying to put some pressure to C6 that Black has to Black has to prevent White Taking on c6, but 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 white, as I said, white is really not threatening to take at c6. So, center being blockaded like that, there's only just king side that something can happen, but remains to be seen if they are continuing playing yes they are king f1 has been played so king is trying to regroup himself to the 
queen side maybe or king e2 and bishop e3 maybe or king e2 and uh, uh, getting queen to king side for example king e2 queen f1 queen g2 and then the other rook can move also to the king side from c1 so these kind of uh, plans white could speculate speculate but there's a lot of time that white has to use for this maneuver so we are seeing that Kekki with black pieces is a little bit like preparing to to get his pieces to better places like bishop comes to b6 and and we are uh, let's see if we have some other move that upgrades black's position but uh, looking uh, very hard to break black's position is hard to break and so is white's we can and many times if you are trying to force those breaks i think it can easily happen that uh, this uh, forcing forcing those breaks are just not going as you want them to go and you can find yourself also in trouble there if you are trying to make things happen too fast so that let's see if this stalemate will get removed and we are getting some kind of action later but then we have also Yari Yarmenpa against Vladimir Vesnosikov Jarvenpa also has um, uh, Jari has played uh, pretty okay and yesterday it was very promising looking position even uh, looked like a one position to me when we looked at it but Jari somewhere slipped up and opponent took the point but Jari has uh, one point uh, first game, well, I guess it was yes, it Yari won, and second game was the, that unfortunate loss. So here we have Yari has a knight and bishop against Black's rook. So technically, Yari has a little bit more material than Black has, but Black. Black rooks are trying to penetrate white's position here. If white can deny that, it is a very good position for white after that. Well, I think just rook c1, protecting c3, what are you going to do? Do with black pieces. Uh, rook a1. I'm just trading one rooks off, and, and this bishop and knight uh, is for sure better pieces than one rook. And uh, if uh, rook c1, rook b3, and intending to go with rook a3, uh, yes, uh, black can put his rooks on third rank, but third rank is not. So scary, I guess. I guess knight can just move to e4 and maybe to g3, and white can start hope, start hoping that he can maybe push some h5 or something like that, and a little by little upgrade his position. At least, I mean position of that knight and bishop and needs they need a little bit better squares where they are now but little by little i think uh, yari could make some good progress there and and prove that black really 
has no that awesome play with his rooks and that knight and bishop pair is uh, better than black's rook all right uh, and last live game from this match Finno agri russia and finland teams uh, is uh, um, Yatsmenev and Nivala between these two players and looking like a pretty equal game. There's a um, King's Indian attack going on with this uh, d3, e4, g, g3, bishop, g2 setup and white getting that e5 e5 pawn push to e5 uh, and getting knights knights to attack uh, many times as you can see white white bishops uh, or pieces look pretty scary they are eyeing on black's king side and Possible h6 sacrifice is about to come like knight takes f6 g takes and uh, I mean knight takes h6 uh, g takes h6 and bishop takes h6 and queen is ready to go uh, join the party I could say from e2 to h5 but this is something that Maybe it's not done that easily. Black can play something. Uh, for example, after queen lands on, after queen lands on h5, black could have, could have played something like f5, e8, e8 queen threatening to trade that white queen if it's at h5 but we are never seeing sacrifices to h6 at least since Nivala has played h5 to at least deny opportunity for white to sacrifice to h6 square but uh, now there's a question if knight moves like uh, Let's say knight h2 or knight e3. Uh, what are you going to do with your h5 pawn? If you are want, if you want to, if you want to uh, protect it, you kind of have to play either g6 uh, with with bishop h6 winning exchange and uh, g6 is also weakening uh, king side and also there was a chance that um, uh, black would have played f5 f5 but all these chances they never happen because there comes a knight f6 wow white is really going for it so now if something like g takes f6 is happening there's h5 uh, pawn hanging uh, queen take with uh, i think if g takes f6 i think it's e takes f6 bishop takes f6 and then uh, white can play Queen take h5 and there's a checkmate coming uh, to h7 square. So black, uh, black really needs some good move now here because it's it looks like white is just crushing on king side. Oh, this is nice to see. What is Thomas going to do with this? Queen takes h5 and queen h7 H checkmate is a real threat now. Also bishop takes f6 is uh, can be played. Uh, 
yeah, it can be played. Bishop takes f6 and e takes f6 and maybe g6 is uh, somewhat forced, it would be, to protect that h5 pawn. Uh, there's a lot of, that's a weakening kingside a lot, like uh, those, if white can travel make some travel travel his queen uh, from e2 to that h6 square after bishop takes f6 e takes f6 and g6 if white manages to get his queen on king side h6 square black king is in trouble and getting made i actually think that this looks very promising for white it's very hard for black to defend uh, i i really cannot see how black can defend if bishop takes f6 e takes f6 g6 just Bishop h6, Bishop g7, Queen e3, Queen h6, and Queen h8. This is looking very grim position for Black Eye. Thomas is Thomas is finding himself under strong attack by White. All right. Uh, then we have. We have teams uh, Finno Greek uh, uh, Russia and Finland who have won both of their matches, and that means because there are four teams, that means that we have two teams Hungarian team and Estonian team that are have not still won a game. One, uh, uh, I mean, they have won a game, of course, at some point, but not match. Match points are not, have been not made for these two teams, and they are playing. They are playing for not for the last last place, but they are playing for third place also. So, which one of these teams can get to third place? Here, Tarvo Seeman with white pieces uh, has a pretty nice looking position, uh, threatening to Queen is um, queen 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 uh, is uh, has grabbed a pawn from a7 and putting some pressure on queen side. Uh, Black's rook on a6 is uh, kind of awkwardly placed right now. King is still in the center also. Uh, if uh, White can manage to get himself in c file, of course that would be like White's dream. White really wants to get his heavy pieces to circle around black's king but um we see how black answers but yeah tarvo seman being one pawn up and black has no real compensation for that pawn so black should make some good use of of his pieces to get somewhere from there but I think that it's uh, it's it's a pretty hard Tarvo Seeman international master from Estonia looking like he's about to crush his opponent. Meanwhile, Karl Kik and Daniel Grimm they have played a draw very solid looking position after 11 moves no need to play anymore this is just draw and both played players agreed 
and now we have Waher Feher. <laughs> Waher against Feher. Uh, it's Estonia against Hungary and table number four. So some attack going on, but it really seems that it's uh, attack. Black has a uh, Bishop e5 and Queen h4 to threat Black's king and that h2 square but Knight f1 is covering covering that h2 square nicely and White is one piece up although Black has full three pawns for that piece so technically for for one for one night uh, that three pawns is like a equal material situation but i think here when there's a lot of pieces on board still left and uh, uh you, your extra two uh, your extra two pawns are really on king side and you are not going to maybe i think it's a little harder to push those pawns since since your king can be weakened if you are just going to push your pawns in front of your king so it looks a little bit harder for black to play although i have to say even king uh, even if usually uh, when you are pushing pawns uh, in front of your king your king is can be left without protection uh, white has no real way to exploit that at least immediately like if uh, something like g5 g4 pawn pushes are coming but but then again g5 is uh, not an option since black's queen can also you uh, know it is i was w wondering if black queen will get in trouble if g5 g3 uh, queen h3 bishop g2 something like that but i guess queen finds <laughs> finds its way to e6 square so at least it's not dropping but anyway uh, g5 pawn is actually yeah it's uh, any immediate any immediate here we see any immediate uh, king side pawn push is just going to be bad i think not working because g5 you have a g3 move and now when queen moves to somewhere like h3 g5 is just hanging because queen is on d2 yeah that's true so so white looks pretty okay one piece up and no checkmates coming and black's attack has only really queen h4 and bishop e5 so that's not going to be enough for attacking pieces too little attacking pieces there so far white white is not getting checkmated uh, and Sander against Kaimar board number six sixth board uh, no attacks here and here is very a uh, little bit more of a strategic battle not a tactical one um, 
white has passed pawn a little bit more space with that d5 pawn and king side being blocked you can see that white has a little more room in his camp but black is just looking very solid that knight lands to d6 d6 square so d5 pawn at least cannot advance and knight d6 is uh, taking uh, keeping a little control at b5 and c4 black can hope to push some queenside majority there's a 3-2 queenside majority for black so black really would like to use that majority to maybe make something happen on queen side but it's not too easy to push those pawns since knight a3 and that bishop that came to a6 are really just preventing black to play any any advance soon all right we see how this goes can black push his majority on queen side can he make something happen on queen side uh, or is he gonna make some totally another plan but um, i think um, white needs to be careful here not to slip up and get into worse position because uh, white really ha has only some b4 pushes on king side is blocked there's nothing happening uh, center is blocked there's nothing happening queen side is really only place that something is happening and black has their three to majority as i said and uh, those rooks uh, are were very ready looking being at c8 and b8 they were very ready to welcome any play on queen side anything like b4 push for white is a4 pawn hands so i was going to say that is not going to happen but of course there's always b takes c5 to speculate but i tend to think that um, if uh, position in queen side opens up um, who is happy is it black who is happy maybe if white cannot activate his rooks okay we are seeing here let's see a little bit later what happens on queen side anyway king side and center is at least being blocked so action is on queen side we who will who will be stronger there is a question Vathra against Dopos here. White coming forward with his center threatening to play e5, pinning bishop d6 and knight f6. Also, white usually in these kind of positions. Uh, black has weakened also that diagonal a2 g8 since f pawn is not at f7 it's it has come to f5 so looking like very active and good looking position for white if you are just uh, f 
taking a fast look in that position um, it looks promising position for white I guess uh, black of course hopes to get something like uh, usually tries to attack against white center with move like c5 but um, of course in this position c5 is not possible because e5 pin uh, winning material and on the other hand c5 white is more than ready uh, many times to just push d5 and trying to open up center of course it's not that easy also but um, anyway white has here a center and uh, black has weakened his a2 g8 diagonal so uh, we see if that is bad for if that is really bad for black or not but uh, looks like a uh, white has some white has some play here 30 moves have been played only white having 40 minutes in his clock and Tuli has uh, there's a whole lot of thinking that black has made 12 minutes on clock so as we remember on earlier rounds there is no extra time coming after 40 moves or so so uh, they have only 30 second increment so if your main time drops too low you are practically playing with only your increment and that is going to put some time pressure I think there has been some at least uh, it seems to me uh, that there has been some time time drops also in this tournament uh, since those live games uh, ha there has been some early endings that I could not explain any other way but just having time dropped so you have to be careful of that clock it's no fun to play with 30 second increment at least if your opponent can think and you cannot it's bad situation and knight goes to h5 and it's like highlighting the black's problems if this is black's best move it really doesn't look like it's doing much queen h4 maybe coming but after just a short castle i think uh, queen h4 can come and mm, or is there there can be some problem bishop is at d6 and it's uh, eyeing to h2 also one plan straightforward plan that i had was like pushing to e5 and after bishop moves from d6 just jump to g4 to because f6 square is taken taken from black but there's that queen h4 check that needs to be countered somehow ah but knight f2 counters it yeah what if e5 like bishop c7 g4 and, e, and e, if we and we and we so and so knight knight f2 and then white is taking g take h4 and knight really has no where to play yes white plays this one how what are you going to do with your h5 knight Tuli. Tuli has really a little bit of problem here. Maybe you can try after e5 like bishop c7, uh, g4, queen h4 check, uh, knight f2, f takes g4, f takes g4 and 
then you can try short castle to make some pressure on king side and that f2 f2 square but anyway that f2 can maybe white can just castle short make short castle and get his king to save and trying to take that h5 knight yeah looking very good for white i think uh, there is some tricks uh, regarding to immediate g4 but anyway uh, even if that does not happen it looks like a white center is a little bit like rolling and that h5 knight seems to be a little bit in a trouble so how are you gonna gonna cope with that blank that's a good question and i think we are getting answer pretty soon since Tuli, Tuli who is playing black pieces have only 10 minutes thinking time so she cannot think too much here bishop c7 yeah has been played and now is it g4 is it g4 trying to get extra piece from h5 or does white have some another plan but you really are just looking that g4 in this I think if if uh, White can convince himself that G4 works, I think he's going to play that since that extra piece is extra piece is usually good to have. Okay, we are seeing it a little bit later. Meanwhile, uh, Tommy has lost his game against Potapo. Uh, as we saw here, I was speculating that white has uh, no compensation for sacrificed pawn and yeah, there really was no play for that pawn and uh, black just made things a little bit faster with these moves since queen on h4 is getting trapped after g5 this was not a success for white this knight c3 knight b5 maneuvers and all that stuff ended ended being not so good uh, of course the problem was the pawn that dropped uh, white was just full pawn down and could not make anything for that pawn black on the other hand just played very convincing moves very convincing moves and upgraded his position and white just got crushed here 33 moves i think tommy had a pretty good weekend before for this Tommy had a uh, victory on first round ah, yeah he, he lost to Kaido yeah so well first board is always hard to play Lukonen might not be satisfied having one victory and two losses after this game and there's a Sibylla game that were, was a draw and also Toivo Keinonen has played a draw against Filipenko I was just saying, what is this? Am I missing something or why does it look to me that d4 knight is hanging and f3 
Free rook is hanging. Oh, so there's a no. I really don't understand this. It's white's turn, but what can white do? Okay. But it was a draw. I think we can have also um, a little bit of wrong position there. That's totally possible too. Because it looks uh, very odd that that game would be draw. But let's see later. We have a uh, Makarenko against Kekki, and we have had some progress here. Yes. It was a very solid looking position, yeah, like here we ended ended up uh, a little bit earlier and uh, there was really nothing happening on queen side or at center so we, uh, we had our eyes on king side and, and yes, white just pushed through in the king side and while that happened black made that c5 push but now you can see that black forces are a little bit awkwardly placed that h4 bishop is just looking trouble there on h4 there's no good square to go if white can just play something like queen g4, rook h1, that bishop is soon going to fall. So black tries to be a little bit maybe desperate by playing c5 and giving up a pawn. But after d takes c5, uh, I think white is just threatening to play d4 and closing everything. Closing everything and eventually taking that h4. Bishop of, I guess you could play rook to c5 too, maybe. Okay, but anyway, white's position looks like uh, good here. Uh, black has some trouble with his pieces. I don't know how, how Kek is trying to survive from here, looking pretty much like getting crushed so fast king side push <laughs> is proven to be very efficient after knight h4 it seems that uh, taking taking first with bishop because bishop d8 has to come to, uh, to h4 and now trapping the bishop at h5 square is looking very very good and d takes c5 we have seen that move and just if if nothing happens white will push d4 and that h4 bishop is still a problem yeah this looks good for white. And Jarvenpa had two pieces uh, against uh, black's uh, rook. And black rook made his way in white's camp. He was able to play to the second rank. Okay, uh, Black King is not coming to join the party. He is not joining the party. As you can see, it's blocked because of those white pawns. But Black has some activity with his rook, so is it good enough? 
if white could just remove that pressure it would be like fantastic situation for white I guess but uh, black rooks they are not passive they are very aggressive and they are just coming there so we are going to see this uh, material imbalance imbalanced position again yesterday Yari lost with being uh, in same kind of situation Yari had uh, I, of course Yari had a little bit better position to than this one but uh, he had a knight and bishop and rook against two rooks and two rook two rooks just got activated at, uh, and there was a extra a pawn that just went running yesterday we are not seeing running a pawn here but we are seeing active rooks so let's see if Yari can handle this amount of pressure and getting his position soli solidified, so solidified somehow and if that happens uh, those knight and bishop can be maybe better than those rooks but we will see about that Tuomas Nivala good job avoiding to get checkmated and looked pretty creepy after this knight f6 since queen was just coming to h five and trying to checkmate black so black had to make some measure take some extreme measures not to get checkmated eventually ending up with uh, ending up in this position rook ending which is totally lost white has three pawns against blacks one so there is not really i think there is no chance Yats Medem is going to slip this one up. Tuomas Nivala is, I think, losing for Finland. So, it doesn't look so good. Tommy Lukkonen first board loses for Finland. Uh, Tuomas Nivala is losing. Uh, Petri Kekki has a pretty awkward looking position. So at Live Games, I think Finno Agri Russia is taking some lead, lead in this match up. Even though Samu Ristoja managed to win Alexei Chasupkin in a fast manner. All right, here are the games, and uh, let's uh, take a little bit break and after that we are uh, it's a fast five minute break and after that we are coming back to see what happens in a game between Hungary and Estonia yeah where there is Attila Seeman you can see it there see you soon I just give you some let's uh, 
I am taking break again, yes, but uh, I'm trying to get you I'm trying to get you uh, some picture from Flame Hall. All right, here it is. Here you can see what happens in playing hall. See you so
and hello. Just a moment. Okay, here we are again. Oop. <laughs> okay, no hat today. All right, let's see where we are right now. Or if there are new watchers, oh, welcome to join this stream. This is Janne Tuononen, Finnish national master, trying to explain what happens on board. Uh, they are playing in Bierumäki, and there's a total of 100 players participating in these friendship matches. 25 players per team. And we have Finno Agric team competition here. We are celebrating uh, 100 years of independence this year in Finland. Finland has grown old, so it seems. So it seems. And uh, we have a different kind of events. Uh, uh, and of course we have also this chess event to celebrate this 100 years of independence. But yeah, many things happening this year because of that celebration year. And this chess event is one of the those celebration things. And so there's a, a team from Hungary, Finland, Estonia, and uh, then there's a, Russian team that is collected from Finno Agric regions of Russia. So it's Finno Agric Russian team, which is playing against Finland right now. Tournament, uh, how has it gone so far? It's uh, tournament has seen Finland and Finn Agric Russia beating both. Hungary and Estonian team. So now what we are deciding here in this final round of this friendship match, we are deciding who is going to get the victory of this friendship league. And um, the Hungarian team and Estonian team are playing for third. place. As you can see, Tarvo Seeman from Estonia against Attila from Hungary. Uh, one, two, three, four pawns for black and five pawns for white, but it seems that something is going to drop since age three pawn is to be captured and there's also some case with that e5 pawn although black has also b7 pawn there hmm i was wondering about some something about like Bishop takes b7, just straightforward manner, but maybe just uh, rook takes h3, rook h1, and what you're actually going to do, rook takes h1, bishop takes h1, and some knight takes e5, there would be 
many pawns for black on king side but good two pawns for white Let's see. I try to put it on analysis board so we can check how these things are going to go. All right, so it's like this and just Wait a moment. All right, it's like this. And what I was explaining uh, earlier was just this bishop b7, what I was thinking about. And yes, indeed, it was, it was played. My idea was something like something like. Uh, this I could show you 